rather a lot has changed in the years since we last spoke. Winston Churchill became the Prime Minister of Britain. The Royal Mile celebrated 15 years of operations. Metal threads were added to the £1 note to prevent forgeries. Stevenage was designated as Britain's first new town, and coal was nationalised. This has certainly been an eventful few years. Germany getting fruity with the rest of the world. We're just going to scoot over that. Okay. Crikey, you guys, that was an intense couple of years. But welcome to 1947. We made it through unscathed and so did the Royal Mile. We're going to talk about how and why in a moment. But for now, we are ushering in the new age of the amusement park. The Great Depression is over. The war is done and prosperity is upon us. People are wanting to get away from all of that doom and gloom and they're spending money in attractions. Now, that means money is flowing into attractions and we now have to compete with everybody else. It's time to up our game and that's why we're doing a three-episode redevelopment of this entire area. Area. You will already see that I've started in this bit. We'll talk about this in a moment. And then next week, we are going to be dealing with this area here. It needs a lot of love and care. And then we've got something coming for this area in the episode after. So yes, the dawning of the new age of the amusement park. Everything is now starting to flood over from the Americas and we're now starting to learn how things should be done. It's time to monetize the crap out of this park because the money is flowing and this is what we've got going on in here we've got three new rides kicking out so we've got the Roctopus that's going to sit nicely here and that's going to complete the dock area or the pier area or whatever you want to call it the boardwalk area in this bit uh, and then we've got the Tilt-A-Whirl so that's going to be sitting pretty this is the, these by the way they're not their final resting places this is just roughly where I want them I need to do terrain and stuff so don't like get attached to these in these exact locations but the tilt -a well this was around in the 1940s so we're all good uh, and then the monte leon this was also around in the 1940s too uh, so actually that could sit there quite nicely on that sight line if you get rid of the pad Hmm, I might keep that there actually, but what I did want to do is have this interacting directly with the supports here, right? So uh, this is what I'm trying to do. I wanted it to be really close to the uh, really close to the supports. Now in terms of monetization, we need an absolute ton of shops. So we're going to have some games units that are going to come down the front here and this will then complete the waterfront area. I've got a placeholder here for some kind of shops that are going on uh, up, up the top here. Um, and then we've got another placeholder for similar shops here. Now, the park is, go is about to make some really questionable choices. So you guys might sit there and think, hang on, that wouldn't happen in real life. No, it probably wouldn't nowadays. But remember, we're in a panic mode of having to upgrade everything really quickly. So we're not necessarily thinking about stuff. We're just doing. Uh, so we're going to have some shops up here. And then we're going to have something down here. I'm not entirely sure what all of these are going to be yet in terms of shops but we need to start providing for the thousands and thousands of guests that are coming through the gate and then up here you'll see that there's a placeholder for some stuff going on here so I've always wanted to develop the back end of the Lido uh, and so that's what we were about to do this is going to be an arcade because games are now a thing uh, and so are pinball machines and ski ball and all sorts of all sorts of fun stuff is now going on so we're going to have a smaller arcade a bit of a bigger restaurant uh, and then it's going to have a bit of a, a pier area here and then in the next episode we're going to focus on this bit there'll be a Lido extension there'll be some new rides and there'll be uh, more monetization of the area going on here uh, and then I won't talk about the the three years so with that in mind I think I'm just going to carry on and uh, get this done we're going to go back in time see me placing all of this stuff down and then we'll develop it forward and well, you know how it goes see you in a minute <laughs>
you go then, guys. This is starting to feel a bit more like a theme park, don't you think? But I tell you what, building in 1947 is actually quite hard because images, particularly colour ones, don't exist for this post-war period. And there's quite a few similarities between the 40s and the 70s. It's like the 40s had some kind of renaissance in the 70s, so any of the images that you are able to find are actually from the 70s. It just doesn't help my confidence level of whether what you're looking at right now is even the correct thing to do. We're going to run with it, and this is what we've got. We'll talk about the war in a moment. I haven't forgotten to talk about that, but let's just show you around all of the stuff that I've done so far. One of the first things you saw me do, other than like putting the stuff down, is to extend this key out slightly. Um, and that's because it feels like that's exactly what this park would have done. It would have utilised some of this space so it can put these units in here. This is like the, the main thoroughfare. This is the area that needs monetizing the most. And so what they're going to do is put a load of carnival style games down. Because yes, they exist now. In fact, they've existed all along, but they're now starting to play a bit more of a key role in monetization of the area. I don't like these units they do feel a bit like roller coaster tycoon 3 out of the box style units i think i need to do some work to make these chachoed but they're going to be carnival games and they're there as a placeholder so i can get a feel for the uh, feel for the area so it's all it's all good the roctopus is looking sweet where it is now um it's a shame i couldn't get a half a half width version of this wall to work I, it just didn't it just didn't happen so i've had to do a six meter wide version and have it like that but it's fine whatever we'll deal with it it looks all right from the sight line this is the two dollars twenty principle does it look all right from a distance then you're good to go you saw me do these rides then uh, i've just put the queue line fences and stuff down and then i've started to also think about how i'm going to landscape the area and how i'm going to like have it bedded into the area i didn't want them sitting on their own pads uh, i actually wanted them to feel like they've just been plonked down onto the uh onto the terrain and then some pathing and whatever has been laid around it so i need to make this a bit more of a thing but i don't know what i'm going to do yet that's that's tomorrow me's problem likewise with all of this flower beds and planters up here this is just me getting an idea for how this would feel if this was actually a raised up waterfall style flower bed that then interacts with the car ride and the uh, the new unit that we've got here so whether or not it survives i don't know but that's just me getting a feel for it and then we come into the design so we're now in 1947. We've chosen 1947 because it's a couple of years after the war. It allows the park the opportunity to actually start to redevelop after the war. Now, the park survived, and that's all good. Like, during the war, amusement parks were able to continue to operate under blackout conditions. They just weren't allowed to have lights and music, and they had to close before sunset. They had to be, like, kept safe and stuff. And they were also spared the resource draft as well. Some of the areas had iron fences and stuff taken away just to make bombs, but amusement parks were so important to the nation's morale that they were exempt from all of this. So the actual park itself may have fallen into disrepair but they didn't need to take rides away to recycle for bombs and all of that sort of stuff it got close but they were okay well what that meant though is that uh, new additions weren't allowed to be made so you couldn't go off and make new additions with the materials that could be used for making bombs so parks fell into disrepair new additions weren't a thing yeah it just happened so what we're saying is 1947 were actually after that period of picking up and now we're starting to invest money back into the park and that then means that there is a theme that's emerging and that theme is future technology and flight spitfires were a massive part of world war ii so what we've got here is blackpool pleasure beach leading the charge with all of their rides everything had to be bigger faster stronger and all of that stuff that comes to it that meant that there was a lot of market for a lot of futuristic style buildings. And this is what this is. This is a 1940s take on a futuristic building. Again, stuff, there's a lot of 1970s references out there. But this is what this futuristic stuff would look like. It's jank. It's horrible. I hate it. But that means it's perfect. <laughs> I hate building in this style. It's, it's awful. But it is what it is. Um, and then we've got these like... Are they shields? Are they, what are they? Like these flag bunting things in flower beds. But it's this idea of future technology mixing with art deco. This this, this is the baby that gets created out of that design mashup. Um, I don't, yeah, as I said, I don't like it. I don't hate it. But they're almost like sails. You could almost guess that down the line, this is probably going to be a pirate area. And it will get rethemed into a pirate area because it feels like a pirate area, but a futuristic pirate area uh, i've also recolored the station for the car ride it feels like that would be a thing um 
they would make the effort to actually color this now they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't maintain the existing color scheme and then of course we've got the new building that's sitting at the top here uh, you probably saw that this building here went through a couple of design changes and actually this is even now that I'm still not happy with it and this is the sixth or seventh iteration of the roof that I've had I just didn't bother filming all of the others I just sort of cut from the original pyramid roof to this one but actually it went through many different variations and whatever and i'm settled on this one but i'm still not sold um but going to the games unit arcades are a thing neon is a thing i <laughs> i didn't realize that neon had been around in terms of entertainment and building since 1910 so it's only now that we're starting to utilize neon and we're starting to utilize the ability to use lights and sh and shapes and colors to shout at your guests like spend money spend money spend money and this is what this is so we're gonna mix this with some arcade games and some carnival games that are gonna live in here very simple ones but they are simple ones but they're games nonetheless and then we're starting to drag through this art deco futuristic style uh like facade that we've got going on in here and then of course you've got the the um electric letters and then we've got the actual vintage light letters got lots of fairy lights going along here uh strip lighting going on here and then we've got the neon strips down here on the um on the pillars these pillars by the way they're actually from the diner set they are very 50s 60s and 70s but these are perfect for 1940 it gives that like future tech building style so that's why i've done them uh, done them in this style pinball machines are a thing they've been a thing since the since the 30s but now they're starting to become popularized and uh, monetized so that's what we've got going on in here and then you've got penny machines they've been around since the victorian times so we're now starting to put the penny machines in and of course you've got ski ball because that's now been imported from uh, america it's part of the war effort so yeah i mean these arcade Whoops, these arcade buildings are not actually much more than this because remember, we are still in 1940, so decor is still very subtle. Uh, we're not like uh, arcades aren't a big deal until the 70s and 80s here in the UK, and that's when we start putting the, the full on like Pac Man arcade machines and stuff. And that's when the modern day arcade that we are used to started to develop. So this is just a room full of machines as it is at the moment. Uh, there's no like lighting neon lighting there's no sounds and all of all of that sort of stuff it is just a room of uh, room of machines and then we come to this restaurant here so i wanted this whole building to feel like it was consistent with the royal mile theme but also uh, well, the royal mile building theme that we've got going on but also this idea of art deco future tech so that's why we've got like these these two juxtaposing uh, buildings going on in here but this is a shack that ultimately looks out onto the lake forgive the fact that i've moved the path and then this is going to interact with the lido extension of next week so what i'll eventually do is bring this um uh decking area down and then this will interact with whatever i'm going to extend down here but inside the uh inside the restaurant you'll notice that there's there's an actual theme in here now so this is probably the first time we're starting to theme stuff uh, and the theme inside here is circus so we're going for circus i don't know what's happened to the wall here i think i need to fix that um, but yeah we're going for the circus theme i'm just going to put a roof over the top here and then call that done um and put like all of the the flooring down and the, and the seats and stuff so that's everything that we have got at the top here i really hate these i need to do something with them so see you in a minute
And there you go, you guys. Just like that, the area has come together. And it's not even because of foliage this time. It's literal grit and determination. And at the end of it, is it 70s? Is it 40s? I mean, it's not like YouTube to be opinionated on anything they see, right? I'm sure one of you will tell me, and I don't even care. So this week, most of my time has been spent on research from anywhere I can find it. And do you know what? It just doesn't exist out there. I found myself borrowing quite a lot from likes of Dreamland in Margate, Pleasureland in Southport, Blackpool Pleasure Beach, and every single picture has looked like this. How do you even work with that? So I'm kind of doing the $2.20 principle on this one and saying, actually, this looks right in black and white. This is pretty much matching what I've been looking else looking at elsewhere. So we'll run with it. <laughs> so let's have a look at what we've got. So you would have seen me uh, tearing down the original uh, games units I had in this in this area. They just didn't fit. I hated them. I am going to use them and I have used them uh, in this bit, but just not in this in the same context and capacity that I did originally. So what I did was I built these new game stalls. I wanted them to be a little bit more vintage. I don't want to say Victorian because they're not Victorian, but wanted them to feel older than they actually were. So that's what I've done here. You saw how I built it. It, by the way, took way longer than that time lapse showed. This was like a day's worth of work just to get this in the right shape. And even now it's not perfect. Could I do more? Yeah, I absolutely could. Do I want to? No, because it's 1947 and they're not going to stay around for long anyway. So pff. do they look a bit modern? Actually, yeah, but that's p partly because of the stuff that I've used. Little, you know those little signs that you get, the vintage Victorian signs and whatever, they just don't exist anywhere and you can't make them because Planet Coaster stuff's too big so we, we're working with what we've got and do you know what, I think they look good as they are, I'm chuffed with these more than the other ones, like yeah it's, it's all good and the Monte Leone is sitting there quite nicely so we've now got these like signs and stuff, you would have seen me putting these in and all the ticket booths, it felt like the Royal Mile wouldn't have done this before because of the style of park that they're in, but post-war, parks were going through this consistency phase and the cheap and tacky phase, and th this park's now doing that. So all of these, while they are now in place, it's the cheap and tacky end of the theme park spectrum, right? So we, that's what we're doing. We're throwing money at it to be like everybody else. So you'll see all of this, this sort of stuff. But actually, I quite like how this sits on the sight line now. This, this feels like it should actually be there so I'm all right with that and then the tilt a whirl has a custom sign spike you'll be so proud I'm chuffed with this sign like it's completely custom it looks just like the original tilt a whirl signs do I mean you're probably looking at it spike will be looking at it going it's crap chacho I could do better uh, but I don't care I did this with my own hands <laughs> and I love it um and I've also put these test your strength things in as well uh, because that sort of like feels like this is what the park would do in terms of the games monetization. And I mean, I can't remember where they come from. They were from the workshop and I've been using them since the Raygate Lake days. Um, so apologies, I don't remember, I don't recall whose they are, but you know, you'll find them. You'll find it if you search for the, uh, search for the workshop. And then we come across to, actually let's go to the Rocktopus. So the Rocktopus has now got a name, it's called Monster. It has its cheap and tacky sign, uh, and now it has ticket booths. I don't really know why I've included ticket booths. They just they were just needed for it to feel like it was the 40s. Um, they're just token. <laughs> Funny. They're just there as a, as a, as a token thing. Uh, yeah, whatever. So, but anyway, this is how the, uh, how the Rocktopus is now looking. Bit of a change of colour scheme and a bit more of a, a, a consistency thing going on. And that's the thing, right? After the war, even Black, Blackpool Pleasure Beach went through a consistency phase. Everything had to be consistent uh, they, in just terms of design and colours and whatever. And that's why I've changed the colour of this food unit. Because I finished this building up here and it definitely felt like the area's theming colour uh, is red red, yellow and blue, so that's what I've done down here. I, cha I changed out, the, for the most part, the purple and I've just given it a bit of, uh, a little bit of consistency. Putting the flower bed here, so that's looking decent, and then putting the flower bed along here as well. You'll spot that I've also done these really awful, I, I hate them and I love them simultaneously, uh, lampposts. I just wanted something a little bit like Margate had and this is the best that I could do with the bunch of stuff that I've got in Planet Coaster. It looks alright, as I said. 
I both hate them and love them. It's like Schrodinger's lamppost. <laughs> and then we come across to the chair swings. That now has a name, so Cyclone Swings. I didn't do much more to this other than change the colours and put the signs in. Again, it felt like the park would have given this a little bit of love and care uh, just to bring it into the area, but nothing more was needed. Likewise with um, the car ride, it now has a name. It's Bluebird, uh, and I've just put in some stuff. You know, like, it's not theming, but it's... It's a bit more interactive with the things that they've got in here. So they just added these like arch lights and whatever just to give it a bit of a vibe because they spent money on the rest of the area. So that's what they've done there. And then we've got these stalls. This was a dead area. This definitely needed something happening in it. So I've just put this area together. This is, as you saw, the original game stall uh, that we've got. And I have just made it a um, an in-game stall. I don't want to do much more with it. And actually, I quite like... This sitting there, although I've just noticed I need to put the thing is in here. All right, leave that with me. I need to put that in. Um, but yeah, anyway, so this is like the, the original game stall. And then uh, the other one I've just set up here. This came from Margate, actually. Uh, I just saw this thing. I was like, actually, that looks really cool. Uh, can I do something similar? So that's what I've done. It's nice and simple. It doesn't need to be any more than this. It's not going to last long. So it's fine. It's in. Uh, then you've got the waterfall... Um, uh, the waterfall flower beds. I told you when I put these in, they were going to make sense eventually. And there you go. This is why this now makes sense. Uh, and I love these. They just frame this off perfectly. This is so quintessentially uh, winter gardens or like British garden park vibe going on. Uh, and then, of course, in the background, you've got the monstrosity that is the, uh, <laughs> it's the games arcade. So a couple of bits that I've done in here. You've got ball in a bucket on this one. This, this is the area, by the way, where I've, I've made attention to the game stalls. So you've got ball in a bucket. Uh, you've got people walking through that one. I've forgotten to put some fences in. You've got a tin can shoot. And then you've got ring toss in here. And then we walk into the arcade and then you get the arcade inside here. This is all a... Stop walking through the walls, guys. You're, you're making me look bad. Uh, this is all the arcades in the 1940s would have been. I've mentioned it before, but this is literally it. This is like photo, almost photorealistic to the other arcade that I've actually used as inspiration. This is exactly what it looks like. It's weird. Uh, so anyway, we're going to come back down this way and into the restaurant. Uh, not much has been done in here other than finishing it off. And look how disgusting this is. It's so circus themed. <sighs> it's so disgusting. It's good. Like, I quite like it in here. I wasn't sure about this as a design when I first started it. But actually, yeah. Especially now I've created the brick and stuff this is supposed to represent like the night and it's almost like you're looking out of the tent um love it like I've, i would never have in a million years thought of doing something like this in, a, in the actual restaurant and this feels like this is probably a design that might actually stay for the uh stay for the long run uh, and then on the outside here i've just put all of the uh the usual clutter and stuff that's out so as i said there's going to be a lido expansion so i've not done anything in this area uh, and that lido expansion is actually going to come out into the water and i've got plans and stuff and then this area of course is going to get it's going to get redone so that's why this is still looking looking a bit bland it's because that's next week's problem um, but I love how this looks. Just look. Yes. And the introduction of all these arch lights just makes it look so forties. <laughs> and then you've got the waterfall flower beds over here. Uh, and there is something that actually you saw me do. I felt that this was really, really important to the storyline of the park. And that is to weather the woody. So what I've done here is all of the brand new concrete that we had originally place down and it was all looking new and shiny in 1930 well, we've had a war and we've had lots of rain and we've had lots of winters and it now feels like this place is starting to need a little bit of love and attention so i've just used the theme makers toolkit dirt that you can get the dirt decals and i've just started to, to spam those uh, spam those around and put them on the floor this by the way is because of the light of the day um it doesn't actually look as jank as it as it appears but i love these dirt decals they're so good so good um, and I don't even know if the park would bother to come along and clean it in the future so it might be that we just over the years just keep adding and adding and adding and eventually it needs like completely completely redoing or maybe the station will burn down or something I don't know um, but of course the dirt decal is everywhere because the the ride is now starting to weather 
So, yes, like, uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, guys, this is how it's looking from the top. I dig this. This is phase one of a complete overhaul of this area. Next week, we'll focus on this one. And by the way, I did. I did get distracted halfway through this episode with a roller coaster idea. So, while you can't see it, the, the episode three roller coaster is actually in <laughs> it's already in the park <laughs> you'll have to tune in for that one guys thank you for getting to the end of the video you know i absolutely appreciate it leave a like leave a comment subscribe all the usual stuff and share the video please share the video this series can only work with you guys showing it some love so i'll see you next week please look after yourselves take care bye bye